Hey, thanks for stopping by. Robert Kofid with Computer Creations, and today we're going to talk about scoring. I've had a number of questions come up in the last couple of weeks, and I'm building a sign for my sister, and I thought this was an absolute perfect time to talk about scoring. When you're making signs of just about any kind, scoring can really help you with the alignment process when it's time to put it together. And so what I thought I'd do is uh, show you how the makeup of this simple sign, why I'm using scoring, a little bit about the nuances of scoring. I'm gonna post a video up in the corner about maximum and minimum power settings in Lightburn and how it relates to scoring. It's absolutely critical. And if you understand scoring and max and min settings on your on in Lightburn, um, you can really do some nice scoring. So you can go ahead and putting together a, a simple sign like this is really easy. Um, for us in the older generation, this sign says, because I said so. And that's what we used to hear all the time as a kid. We would ask, why would you have to do something? And your parents would say, because I said so. And she is an av avid seamstress, and so she wanted this sign. And like I said, it's, it's a perfect example of why you'd want to score when you're putting a sign like this together. And it's a, a one additional step, but it will save you a lot of time when it's time to put a sign like this together. So let's jump into Lightburn. I'll show you uh, how the makeup of this sign, the settings I used for my uh, score layer, and the other thing that I will tell you is um, I'm brand new to, to uh, True Flat Wood. Um, this is not a sponsored video in any way. I started using it a couple of weeks ago. I always had lots and lots of Baltic birch and it's just getting harder and harder to come by and the quality seems to be not as good as it once was. And so I thought I'd give it a try and I will tell you I absolutely love it for, for, for the small amount of time I've used it. I've ordered the linen color, the black, the white, uh, they were out of walnut, but I will tell you, if you haven't tried True Flat before, I'll put a link to their website uh, in the description. Again, this is not sponsored in any way. I just uh, started using it, and, and it's, uh, man, it cuts like butter. And you can get it in larger sizes if you need it, like to fit in the, in the you know, a larger laser. Um, if you go to trueflat.com, um, you can see that they do sell several other sizes. Um, so if you haven't used it, take a look at it. It's uh, a product that I'm fresh to, but I tell you what, I've really enjoyed using it the small amount of time that I have. So let's jump into Lightburn and get started on this sign. Okay, so let me give you a breakdown of the components of this sign. I'm going to hit PF12 to get rid of my uh, pages over here. And what I'll do is I'll show you a, a picture of the actual sign down below here. And so you can see that we've got this sign is two inches high by 12 inches wide. It's got a border uh, around the perimeter of the sign that's painted, along with some text that is cut out that is also painted. And I cut both the border and the text out of uh, the white true flat. Then these are sublimated pieces. Um, I sublimated these with uh, Unisub hardboard, and uh, so that's a sublimated piece. And so um, what I wanted to show you is why it's nice to understand and to learn how to score. And so if I was going to put this sign together, I could do it by eye, but in all honesty, it takes a lot of time, and if you're off just a little bit, um, you know, typically you can't go back on when you're putting these signs together. And so I'll show you how to use the scoring method to uh, make some marks so you know exactly where these sublimated pieces go and exactly where the, the, the frame is pretty obvious, so that's no big deal. But this text is critical. And if you don't uh, get it in its right spot, it's going to look funny. Okay, I've taken this apart for you. So we've got... Um, this is the two pieces that we're going to cut out of white true flat. This is the border and this is the text. Okay. And then on a separate piece, this is going to be the linen color. We're going to uh, cut that same backer. So this, we've got a rectangle that is two inches tall by 12 inches wide. 
uh, along with our score layer. And our score layer is green. Remember, I always uh, of the opinion that you should be using color as a function, not a setting. And so black is frame, blue is engraved, red is cut, and green is score for me. So we're going to cut these out, we're going to cut this perimeter out, and then we're going to score this internal piece along with the just inside the pieces that I've cut out for my sublimation. And so you can see that this is the red is going to be the piece that I cut out for my sublimation. And the green score line is going to stay on this linen piece. So if I grab these, <clears throat> pull them down, this is going to be the unisub hardboard that I cut out. And I will have my green uh, score marks that are just inside. Um, if you don't know how to score, um, I will uh, put up a link to a video on the ins and outs of setting your max and your mins in uh, when you're doing scoring. It's very critical. So watch this video that I've put up in the corner. Uh, it will really help in uh, getting your score lines nice and even. If you don't know how to do that, um, or if you don't know how to offset, just remember if you select your text, come over here to the offset. You can zoom in here. And if we offset this to the inside by 0 0.01, you can see that it's going to generate a score line just inside the text that you cut out. And that's what you're going to burn on that backer plate. So you can use it as a guide when you're placing your text. It's a great technique and uh, it works out really well. So that's how you do that. So we got basically just um, this piece here, this piece here. We're going to cut out this piece. It's going to have some score lines on it. Matter of fact, I will put a, go to PF12 here, get rid of this, and I will show you a picture of uh, a backer with just the score lines on it. It will be right here. And you can see when it scores, it gives you a great uh, alignment guide to place those unisub pieces and that text. And you see that you don't have any burnt corners anywhere. It's all uniform, and it's light enough that once you put the, uh, cut out pieces over these score lines, um, it'll be no problem at all. So uh, that's how we go ahead and we get our score layer. Let's go ahead and I'll show you what uh, my score settings were for this particular setting and we can talk a little bit more about scoring. Okay, let's talk a little bit about score settings. So green is my score layer. And this was cut on a 35 100 watt uh, Thunder Nova CO2 glass laser. And you can see that we've got, this is our setting. We've got 300 millimeters a second at 5% power for max and 4% power for min. Now, if you will watch that other video that I put a tag uh, up in the corner on, you'll come to understand that the reason why we typically want our uh, max and our min powers uh, differently almost always in a score situation is again depending on your laser what happens is your laser will use um, a lot of times depending on again the size of the laser you use um, on straightaways it will use your max power and in the corners it will use your min power and so if you get burnt corners when you're trying to score something, it's because the minimum power setting is set too high. And so as you can see that there's not really much scoring going on, or excuse me, scorching going on in the corners. But uh, when in doubt, if you do have scorching going on in the corners, you need to reduce your minimum power. Again, this is on a CO2 uh, type laser. Diode lasers don't have minimum power settings, so you're not going to be able to adjust that. But um, that's the difference uh, when you're doing scoring, is your max power and your min power should always be slightly different uh, when you're just trying to make some light score marks. Now that we've got all the components cut out, so we've got our backer board in linen true flat. You can see that we've got our scores all done. This, remember that this outline is slightly smaller 
than our sublimated pieces along with our slightly smaller than our text. And at this point, it's really pretty simple and straightforward. Once you have these score lines, um, it's real easy to go ahead and get things placed. Now, I'll because I've only got a few of these to make, I'm probably going to glue this down with some CA glue. If I had a lot of these to do, I would probably um, put some 3M on the back of these and uh, do it that way. But uh, for this particular project, I'm just going to glue them. And basically, you can see how nice it is to be able to just go ahead and I usually work from the inside out. So I would go ahead and I would place my text first. And of course, I would be putting glue down before, you know, before I put this down. Then I put that there. This here. This here. And then go ahead and put, of course, a frame is the easiest part of the whole process, right? And because we scored this and this, you can see how easy it was to put this together. And so if you haven't used scoring before, I would highly recommend that you give it a try. It makes putting things together like this a piece of cake. If you enjoyed the content, I'd sure appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And if you have the ability, hit that thanks button and contribute to the channel. It's those contributions that really make this possible. Until next time, thanks and have a great day.